Hey y'all, I have Billy the Kid here with me. Hi Billy. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I can't complain. It wouldn't do any good. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. You ain't never lied. Most definitely. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm 25. I'm a cowboy. I rap. Uh, that's an interesting know. combination. <laughs> exactly. You a cowboy I, and you rap. I get that a lot. Most okay. definitely. Most definitely. Okay, we're going to dive into both. Let's drop, dive into the cowboy situation first. So you train horses. Yes, ma'am. Explain that process. Well, see, now I do like a 90-day process, you know what I'm saying? And I always hook them, you know, because it sounds real good. I do $10 a day for 90 days. 10 times 90 is 900, you know what I'm saying? Boom. I take it in 300 increments or 900 at the end. First 30 days, all groundwork. I don't care if you rode this horse before or not. All groundwork, you know what I'm saying? Teaching everything from the floor, never going to his back. Next 30 days, I'm on his back in the yard, in the pen, um, wherever we want to go, you know what I'm saying? The well, next 30 days, if you want your horse on the streets, you know what I'm saying, the street, street broke and all that, I do that. If not, I'm going to just keep him where you, um, you know what I'm saying, on the, at the barn and spinning them out, riding, loping, whatever they want, I want to do. What does it mean if you want your horse street broke? What is that? Like, because, like, most people don't ride their horses on the streets. Like, that's really, like, an urban thing. I'm an urban cowboy, you know what I'm saying? So, like, most people that rodeo and whatnot, those horses, you won't catch a, a roping horse on the streets because that's a $100,000 horse. That's a $50,000 horse. Mm -hmm. Anything happen, uh, like a plastic sack, let's say, a Walmart sack, if they can come again, if fly down the street and spook that horse, boom. You got drains, holes, cars. That's a hundred thousand dollar horse that just got hit. Boom. It just nah. So like most horses, I ain't gonna say, like, I ain't gonna say they're nags, but you know what I'm saying, riding horses, it's different. It's levels to the game. Okay. And so when did you start with training horses or when did you say, okay, I'm a cowboy, this is what I'm doing? <laughs> and then how did you get into all of that? Well, like uh when I was fourteen, you know, my, my grandfather, he lived in Taft, Oklahoma. That's, oh, okay. my, that's from my dad's side. It's from like everybody down there is like my family. My auntie is Alita Davis. Mm -hmm. First black mayor. In America, female mayor in America, tell me to uh, ever, you know what I'm saying? It's amazing. Yes, 1921 got some bombness you know yeah. in there. Yeah, that's my that's my grandfather's sister. Like, it's my auntie, you know. And uh, my grandfather's Floyd Smith. He raised horses, greyhounds. We go jack rabbit hunting and whatnot. But, like, you know, I rode horses with him when I was younger, like, mm -hmm. uh, up to like an eight, you know what I'm saying? But then I was out here in Tulsa, so we. We didn't go out there like that, so I just, you know, said roaming the hood. I'm a North yeah. Side baby, so I'm in Turley, and I seen a horse that was malnutrition, and I took it upon myself to rehome the horse. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I took the horse home and start feeding it myself and start riding. In Turley? It. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what part of Turley did you keep a horse? No, I didn't keep a horse. I stole a horse from Turley. Yeah, <laughs> it took you where? To my house on the uh, 43rd in Johnstown. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, I didn't call the people on them, which you know what I'm saying? I just rehomed it. They weren't taking care of it, so I figured I'd just do it. Take it off their hands. Yeah, and I ain't know nothing about a horse, you know what I'm saying? But I guess I cut a sheet up. I wasn't scared of it. I just hopped on the horse and took off with it. No saddle. Saying? No saddle, nothing, you know? And um, went home with it. I fed it, like I said, for like 30, 40 days. My grass in my backyard was hella high, so. She was all right. My friend, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I went and got some sweet feeding to start learning the game. And I had a horse ever since then. And I was like, this just took off, you know what I'm saying? And I mastered my craft, like, honestly. Like, I ain't the best at what I do, but what mm -hmm. I do, I'm good at. You know right. what I'm saying? Most definitely. What in your mind clicked and, like, made you think, okay, I'm going to work for myself. I'm going to do the horse thing. How did you come about that? Uh, Like I said, I always loved horses, but, like, and I always been about money, even since I was ever since I was little. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you gotta go get your own money. Like my mom was a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Never heard her complain. Single parent. You know, and she didn't still started me and my big brother Dino, who was also part of the team. But like we we, we business minded because of her. You know what I'm saying? She's a true gritter. Like mm -hmm. she got it done. So I just took to it like a fish with water, and just knew I like you gotta get your own money and learning from other people's mistakes and my mistakes. You know, so I graduated my mind, I think, my way of thinking, you know what I'm saying, leveled up. Does she inspire any of your music? Most definitely, most yeah. definitely, most definitely. Which, what, what songs or what about your music process does she inspire? 
everything. Like I said, she is me, you know. Yeah. So everything I know is from her and my big brother. So like pretty much everything. Like I said, she is a gritter. She's from the streets, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so she embedded everything. The, the, the morals I stand on, the respect I give, you know what I'm saying? She's me. I'm a reflection of her. So pretty much everything. But I got songs, you know what I'm saying, dedicated to her also. But like I said, pretty much everything I do is reflection of her because she's my family. Okay. Most definitely. So... From cowboy to rapper, how did we how did we end up there? <laughs> like I rap my whole life, like freestyling and getting it in, you know, like since I was a kid, like honestly, since elementary. My mama gave me the first my first rap name was Slick Fifty, you know, it was like I was, <laughs> Yeah, I was in pre K. Like that's Slick Fifty. Yeah, Where'd was, she come yeah. up with that? Well, I was like I was in pre K, we lived in Morning Star, you know what I'm saying? I lived in Morning Star from zero to the age of eight, you know, so boom. I like, so I'm in pre K. But I'm going I'm supposed to go to, we going to school, we catch the bus outside the gate. I was going to Anderson Elementary. And me and a couple of my homeboys, when I go outside, it's a, it's a dumpster out there, you know, the long dumpsters, and they had some mattresses and a number of mattresses. So when I go out there, they jump another mattress in the trash can. So we, as kids, we all start jumping in there, me and a few of my, my partners. My big brother. Wait, he, wait, the mattress was in the trash can? Yeah, like people threw them, threw them away, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's nothing but mattresses in there though. So my brother, he was smart enough to go and go to school because my mother was you know. <laughs> but me, I always been a lot of different, you know. So I'm like, now we jumping on the mattress. We doing backflips. And my Aunt Vivian, old woman, she was living with us for a second. She come outside to take the trash out. We, we not even paying attention to time. I wasn't intending to skip school, but she came outside and she called my mama. I got my butt with right there outside in front of everybody. And she called me Slick 50 that day. And I'm like, I like that name. I got a ring to it. <laughs> but 50 Cent came out, he stole my name. So I had to, I had to rearrange a lot of stuff. And, but I've been rapping for a long time. And I just never put nothing out, you know what I'm saying, until, you know what I'm saying, I came back home and whatnot. But... Yeah. Okay. You came back home. Where were you? In prison. For what happened? Uh, I went to prison for five years for a robbery. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. What? Um, that just threw me for a loop. Most definitely. <laughs> I most didn't definitely. know that. Yes. Oh, how do you? How was the process of coming home and then getting back used to being home? How was that process? Uh, honestly, I came home and that was a hundred times better, you know what I'm saying? Smarter, faster, stronger, all the way through and through. And like, like I said, I totally leveled up. Like, I ain't, I've been home two years as of August 18th. Congratulations. I mean, August 13th, take that back. And like I said, now I'm, uh, I'm 25, I own my house. Uh, okay. I bought a house, legal money. Um, only, I, so I came home, I only not worked for three days, which is the first three days I was home. I had a job ever since. I made pretty good money because... As a young man, I always did a trade. Like I said, I got, when I got towards community, I found older men who taught me the game. I never hung with people my age. Like, all my partners are up in age. So, boom, they taught me, like I said, to own my own stuff. You know what I'm saying? I work with a guy named Mr. Nelson. Uh, in the Rodeo community, he's real, he's real big name, Nelson Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, he's been all over, world champion roper. Got a bunch of kids. They run the rodeos around here, Michael Jackson and all of them. But, um, you know, I did a bunch of roofing and, you know what I'm saying, Concrete work, and I always learned, you know, so I always done something. So, I, my senior year, I got a trade in carpentry. I got my conference in carpentry. So, like, I always been, you know, saying around construction and stuff like that. And, like, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just how it went. Like, what clicked in your mind to say, okay, I don't want to contribute to the statistic of being in and out of jail? Like, what made you be like, okay, nah? Because, like, it was like my third time, you know, saying, like, not to prison, but like, you know what I'm saying, juvenile, went to juvenile twice, nine months the first time, three months the second time. And you know what I'm saying, that was nothing, you know what I'm saying. And the juvenile, I run everything, you know what I'm saying. Like, it was a cakewalk. Boom, prison, like I said, I'm five years. That was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And during that time, I had to, you know what I'm saying, rebuild my whole self, my mindset and way of thinking, you know what I'm saying, because I was gone. But while there, I studied every religion, you know, sitting on a man just about, different languages, but try to learn different languages, it's, that's pretty hard for me, I can't really do that, like Swahili and whatnot, I could do a little bit of it, but it was hard, but like, you know, uh, religions, business, you know, so I taught a class. You uh, taught the class? Yeah, like, I said, I've always been different, you know what I'm saying, like. What class did you teach? Tell me about the class uh, you taught. It was a religious movement, Nation of Islam, but I'm not a Muslim, I don't believe in no religion, but I respect God in every form you come in. Right. So we took the um, we took that platform and we renamed it to Nation of Leaders and we took we taught a leadership course which is called um, Nation of Leaders. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, it's a course that Warren Buffett, all types of you know, CEOs, Oprah Winfrey, 
uh, Kevin Hart, they take this, like, it's like a seminar, you know what I'm saying? And it's just about, you know what I'm saying? Like, the 48 Powers of Law, you ever read that? I haven't, not yet. I've been wanting to read it for a minute, though. It's something like that. It's just like a, a resharpening and rekindling things in your mind, you know what I'm saying? Of influence, mm -hmm. which, which, which that's what won the world, you know what I'm saying? To be, to be a better leader, be a better you, you know what I'm saying? Just sharpening those stuff you already know, just keeping it on your mind and refreshing it. What's one thing you can share with us about leadership that you feel like, okay, this is what you should know, this is where you should start? When you're leading something, you got to know where you're going, mm -hmm. whether good or bad. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're blind, they don't tell them where you're going to end up. So whatever you're doing, if you're trying to be a leader, like I said, whether good or bad, you know where you're trying to get. Once you know you're trying to get, you get there by all means. And like I said, influence is everything. You got to know your audience and the people to target. And boom. And uh, that's pretty much about it. You know what I'm saying? Being a leader, you got to just, like I said, and be ready to take responsibility for everything and every way it go. Respect all aspects of the game. You know, that's pretty much about it. Okay. So flipping back to the music side, who would you like to work with? Uh... What do you mean? Like, what, like, what, like what ever, artists like, would you ever? Like, our like local, local uh, and big people, who would you like to work with? Like I said, local, I got to go with Charlie Wilson. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah, you want to yeah. work with Charlie Wilson? Yeah, he's still, he, he still dropping hits right now. Oh, he is. He get on features right now to step. I get on there with Charlie. <laughs> yeah. That would be dope. Oh, my God. If gosh. you know, that's how the gap band, like, I ain't going to say that's how they got on, but once they change their image, which is the, boom, cowboy boots, the hats. That's when they start clicking because you got to recognize and understand where we at. You know, so it's Oklahoma. Most of our rappers right here want to sound like a California or something, you know what I'm saying? Once, once we get our own sound and get our own look and something that, you know what I'm saying, is going to separate us and get us apart, not saying I do this for that because, like I said, this is life I actually live, you know what I'm saying? Against the cowboy and our rap. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying, you got to go back to your roots, you know what I'm saying, hit your sources, but yeah, locally, it gotta be Charlie Wilson because, like I said, he's a, he's a legend. He right. Goat, and he's like, so he's still stepping. But like, as far as just like big name features right now or major features right now, I don't uh, I don't know because like I don't really don't listen to modern music. I do like my my my, my son put me on something or something like some young boy or something. But bro, I don't know. How did you say? He's four, but uh. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> like, he's four, he be putting you on music? Yeah, all the time. All oh, the time. my gosh. Is he on TikTok? He ain't doing it yet, but he always watch him. But he in most of my videos, though. He in most of my music videos. Oh, like, yeah. my gosh. That is so adorbs. Yeah, but I like, I like country music. Like, I like to rap it. Or old school, you know what I'm saying? Like, so Favorite I, I, I old get, school Boosie. Song. If I got to do a future, I got to be with Boosie. Then. Like, I'm going to go with Boosie because, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Who's your favorite old school artist? Um, Curtis Mayfield. Okay. Favorite country artist? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I gotta go with the GOAT. For real? I gotta go with the GOAT. Yeah. Okay. People who are, who, people who want to do what you do, what would you tell them? What's that, uh, do what? Like music or what? Music, the horse training. Like I said, just go do it. Like I said, I got into it. I went and stole me a horse and I ain't never looked back. So it just put a new aspect into my life. Like I said, I own a bull, I own cows. I got 15 acres on 51st and Lewis. I got five on 54th, you know, Louis, you know what I'm saying, over there, you know what I'm saying? And like, I mean, it's, 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 it's a major plus in my life. That's my main love, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't dream of getting my money and blowing up and going to anywhere else. I want to buy me about 300 to 1,000 acres and get all my family out there. 20 of we set up houses, the rest of it, we got cows, bulls, chickens, pigs, and we're gonna work the land. You wanna start your own brand, if you're a female, you're gonna start your brand, put money behind it, but you gotta be serious about it, you know what I'm saying? And I just love family, friends and family, you know, some real family, the family I create, you know. But. What projects are you working on? What do we have to look forward to? Um, I got an album coming soon. Real soon, soon. Yeah. real I'm soon. I'm not gonna say the date, but not gonna say the it's date. gonna be a present. I'm gonna just say it like that. It's gonna be a present to the world. I've been promising the tape or body at work for a while, and it's gonna come before the end of this year. I promise that. But I got a video coming soon. Patty Cake, I just dropped my single on YouTube. It's gonna drop on all platforms August 8th. And that's like a uh, strip club, club banger, twerk. <laughs> yeah, twerk anthem. You know I'm talking about it's gonna turn up the whole world. Oh my god. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, you know. I just, 
said October. August, 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 Comfort zone, you know what I'm saying? Mostly make gangster music, but I got stuff for everything. I got a bunch of different stuff that I don't, that I don't get to see. How did you link up with the 1921? Um, just, you know what I'm saying? Mainly God, you know what I'm saying? Because he put everything, everything and laid in, in, into place for a reason. But like I said, my partner Roy, which is my brother, I grew up with him all my life. Mm. King, I grew up with him all my life. And it's like, boom, I make music, you know, I've slept on a lot, but you can't deny greatness, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They see it. We, I see it. I'm saying like, I love the brand. Like I'm a big history buff. Like mm -hmm. history, politics, religion. That's a topic we can go about all day, every day. Like I love stuff like that. So like even the brand alone, like you know what I'm saying, they reached out. I'm like, hell yeah. I'm always with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Plus, it's a major platform. Like I said, the number one platform, number one label in Oklahoma. and mm -hmm. going to be in the world real soon because you see what happened in less than six months. So let's yeah. see. What, watch what happened when... When Jesus step, you know right? what I'm saying? Yeah, most definitely. How do you feel about politics right now? With the climate, I mean, it's it's so sticky and it's so mm -hmm. it's a lot going on. See, I got a universal way of thinking, so a lot of folks get mad at me with my po political ways, but uh, I like so I watch the debate and I don't know. <laughs> I I, I sell <laughs> like I study politics. I, Trump, people hate him because of what he say, but as far as politically. You can't say too much bad that he's done, you know what I'm saying, political wise. Yeah, the border stuff, we're locking the kids up and all that, that's probably one of the only things that's going to really rise and stir and rise them. But other than that, politically, the man has run that White House, you know what I'm saying, pretty much all right, very fairly decent. But he's crazy, most definitely, with things, <laughs> the things he's saying, and which, which throws the black community off. But once you analyze what he said and analyze what's really going on, you gotta just be like, oh, okay. It's America. If you think he's the first and only racist president that ever stepped in that office, you crazy. It's everything I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for real, he's not the first one and won't be the last. Right. But at least he give it to you raw and gutter. You know what you're dealing with. It's, it's up the to evil us. you know. Most definitely, but yeah. you know I'm saying? political, presidential, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? What matter is real regional. You know what I'm saying? Your zones, your codes, the 706, the yes and no. That's what matters. Your governors, the people in your region. Because they put that man in office, you know what I'm saying? Your electoral votes, all that is what really counts. The the popular vote, he can, he can win or lose that, and it doesn't matter, you know what I'm right. saying? So you got to put the person you want in position to represent you. We can't just focus on the presidential election. We got to focus on things like the roads. We always trip about how Oklahoma leads in incarceration, but is in, uh, in last in education because the stuff we vote for. We vote for better roads, but not education. We shut down all these schools and made them come with the high schoolers. Look at what's going on. You got a high school and a school and a middle schooler. Yeah. And pff, you do the magic. You do the work. It's targeting the communities to a, to a it's, it's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? But people don't want to analyze that and the stuff that really matters. They'd rather listen to what the internet says, listen to what JoJo says, instead of dissecting stuff and breaking down and getting their own understanding of it. Because at the end of the day, you got to target everything that really matters. And that's what really matters. And people don't even focus on that. So... What would you tell like a young man in order that grew up where we grew up? Like, um, what would you tell him so he doesn't make some of the same mistakes that you make? Um, just listen to everything, you know what I'm saying? Your elders tell you that what will happen to you if you make the wrong mistakes. You know what I'm saying? We take the wrong road because everything that my old elders tell me and everybody warned me about, it happened. You know what I'm saying? Homie snakes, friends dead, friends in prison, never coming home, all type of stuff. Like it's all, it all falls in place, especially if you're living that life. But like I said, you can talk to everybody till you're blue in the face. The beautiful thing about life is you have your own perspective and your own train of thought and your own opinion and decision to make. A kid gonna do what he wanna do. It ain't about where you was raised if you wanna be a gangster, because you can try mm -hmm. to leave your house and go shoot anybody, you know what I'm saying? So I said to say this. Make your right your right, your wrong your wrong. Stand on it and respect every aspect of the game. You know what I'm saying? That's the best I can give it to him because we got to have those positions and players in the world, honestly, because without a poor man, you can't have a rich man. Mm -hmm. Without goods, you can't have bad. The waters all got to come together. Yeah. Just do what you're going to do. Do it to the fullest and to the best of your ability, but don't let nobody else make your decisions for you. How did you come up on humility, humility. like I don't know the way to ask that, but 
I noticed earlier you said you work under people and that's how you learn from your elders. And I think that's a missing element with people nowadays. They don't understand the process of learning under somebody so that way you can actually understand how things work and you can be brought up and learn trades and learn how to make money on your own. And I think when people say, I want to be an entrepreneur or they say, I want to do this or do that, they miss the part of you need to work under people and learn. Most definitely. Most so definitely. how did you, like, what in your mind made you realize that? Like, some of big history free, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, numbers don't lie. The life I live, you know, some outside person, you know what I'm saying? And um, a trade is something that a robot can't come do for the most part. You know what I'm saying? The robots are taking over. But how I really got into that, you know what I'm saying, is just... It was something I wanted to do, and like you get honest, like I said, you gotta have it. In like a trade, like I said, people always push college, which is that's what you want to do. You gotta figure out what you want to do because eighteen hours, so you got another year to figure it out. You honestly do, but you honestly don't mm -hmm. because like a trade, like I said, apprentice. That's a word that's been around since early, early, early on in the, in the beginning of time. You know, what I'm saying back in the day, an eight year old little boy, my family would give him away to a man who was a welder. No, well, not a welder, but a mason carpenter and they let him move in and he gonna send me all the payment that little boy gonna go through whatever that man had to put him through just to learn to trade and so I know then business is business you know what I'm saying you got to have that because like now two years after being an apprentice you get your journeyman mm -hmm. then another year after that be a master that's three four years you own your own company now once you're on your own company you hire your friends and you teach them the game now you're gonna say you should carry your family, but if your friends are not gonna you still got people like see, you got Tim Service that'll hire people out for you. But now you got your own trade. You can do side jobs. Everybody you know get a hole knocked in their wall, need a refrigerator put up, a TV mounted, you know what I'm saying? Side jobs rather, you know what I'm saying? No, that matter. Even though you got a job at nine to five, you're working for Steve's construction, you still can do your own thing. And once you get enough knowledge, education, you know what I'm saying, about a trade, you know what I'm saying, it's common sense and it's law that you elevate because once you remain stagnant. You die in that position, and nobody wants to do that. You know what I'm saying? So you always got to want to. You don't get a job. Say I'm gonna be cash for the rest of my life. No, you want to be the manager. Then you want to be the CEO. Then you want to get. You always want to elevate. So, like I said, with that trade, you learn your trade good enough, branch out. Let's say get you a business loan, whatever. You already got your hands gonna make it. Right. But it's faith. It's you gotta walk on faith. You know what I'm saying? But it was just something I figured, and I knew that. Cause like I said, I watched older men. I worked with them all my life. Like I said, roofing and everything like that. And, the profit and the survival they, they had off of it. I know it'll take me somewhere. It's going to be always be needed. It's a job that'll always be needed. How did fatherhood change you? Um, you know, like, he's not mine biologically, mm -hmm. but he's my girl's son. And he's a four, like I said, and I've been around for two years. So, like, it changed me a lot, you know what I'm saying? So, I didn't get the whole experience. So, you know what I'm saying? No. I'm tired, she tired, and you know, all that. No, no, but, like, as far as, like I said, it takes a lot for a man to take on a another child, though. Most definitely, most so definitely. So, you still fatherhood. Oh, hey, shit, hey, shit. then you still have a lot to express about how it changed you because that was optional. It wasn't most definitely. mandatory. Y'all finna get to that, too, in a second. Like, it's like, it changed me a lot because, like I said, I first came home. I I did, I was doing the right thing, working and everything like that. But adding him to my life showed me a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, carrying him in the house when he sleep at night. That's a feeling I never felt before, you know what I'm saying? Teaching him stuff like, I got him a pony, you know what I'm saying? He ride horses with me all the time. So, like, showing him the game and watching him do what I do and trying to be like me, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? And I just love, you know what I'm saying, putting the right information to him and getting the energy out of him. Like, you can make him mad. And, like, a grown person, you make them mad, they want to talk to you for six months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you make him mad, you know what I'm saying? About the orange juice, he come back later on that night and be right up on you. I love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to play, fight and everything. So, it's like... It's a genuine love and respect there. And plus, I never had a father really in my life, so it's like it's something totally different. Like, I coach this football team, I'm head coach of the football team now, and it's, it's different, like you know what I'm saying, but it's a good thing. All right. Well, tell the people where they can find you. Oh, uh, like I said, uh, everywhere, Bill the Kid, except for Facebook, just Scott William, but Instagram, YouTube, Twitter is Bill the Kid, B I L L I E, space D A K I D. The Kid is all together. And you gotta spell it just like that. If not, you're gonna get the Western, the old Western bit of the kid, <laughs> William Bonnie, you know what I'm saying? I'm the reincarnation. You know? But that's the story we'll get to later on down in life in my career, you know what I'm saying? Which is, like I said, I'm a history buff, so that's where the name comes from. 
Yeah, you know, we get the same name, so I roll with it and ran with it. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate you showing up. Most I definitely. appreciate you coming out. Most definitely appreciate you inviting us. No problem.